points they've had so far on their travels this season. But along with Lyon, the only side not to have at least won one of those away days. Completely different when they're at home, of course. Nine wins out of ten, finally losing that uh, home winning streak. Last time out, the 46-10 uh, shellacking at home to two on who were really in hot form ahead of that game. Coming up against Toulouse later tonight. In fact, Bayonne yet to have been beaten actually in their home stadium since they returned to the top 14 at the beginning of last season. They have lost two matches away to Po, and the then of course against Toulon. And the match against Po was in last season, but both of those matches taking place down in San Sebastian. A bigger stadium there, a bigger crowd, a bit more money for the club. A few less points for the club though as well. So the players out onto the pitch here. So just outside the periphery. And the southwest edge of Paris. Very much in the shadow of the uh, Parc de Prance, which you can just see in the background there. The uh, former home of uh, Les Bleus. Back in the uh, 70s and 80s and through the 90s as well, up until when the Stade de France was built for the 1998 ouais, okay. Football Allez, World Jean Cup. Our referee today then, Pierre-Baptiste Nouchy. And he prepares to get us underway here then. At the Stade Jean Bois. Stade Francais, of course, in their usual all pink strip, kicking from left to right in this first half. Marchino with the up and under. Taken just on the edge there by Tiber again. Not the quickest ball there. The Parisians crabbing across into midfield here. Good strength there, upper body strength. Being shown by Federico Mori. Well, Bayon are managing to slow the ball down a little bit here. Nice little chip through. Oh, and that could have been a good bounce as well, but instead it's fallen nicely to Baptiste Hegui. Marchino gets it out to Thomas Sette. And now quick ball from Camille Lopez. First time Bayon running with the ball in hand. Marchino now. Back to the forwards again. Oh, and that's a loose pass. Tammy Lopez, say, not in the... Uh... Oh, sorry, Tammy Lopez very much someone in the uh, autumn of his career. Not quite as uh, quick as he used to be. This was a poor pass, though. From Martian up, you can see the... Uh... <laughs> it's rentré, hein? Oui, oui, oui. Ouais, c est, c est Look there from Marchino ouais, as he uh, flipped ouais, that pass out, realised he blazed it straight ouais, over the head direct, of his former international direct, teammate. Là, Great to see the two of them <laughs> playing back together c est, c est again, having là, been uh, ouais, ouais, so rentré, paired together dehors, for France rentré, for so uh, much of the previous même. decade. Both ending there. Ouais, ouais, elle est direct, uh, French careers back in 2019 after that year's World Cup. So we're going to be back, brought back all the way to the five-metre line. The pass coming from outside the 22. And Lopez not allowed to put the ball out on the fall from there. So a great attacking line out here. Mikhail Ivaldi needs to be accurate. Now we'll get them all. Can they get the, the shove on here? Stade Francais. And the Bayon Pack holding up well. He's been spread out into midfield instead. And they think they've stolen the ball there of Bayon. Yes, they have. Fantastic jackling on their own try. And now a chance on the counter attack for Bayon. Fantastic footwork there. The pass out into space. Can they keep going here? 
on to the edge of the 22. Marchino right up with the play, still going forwards now, Bayo. Carreras steps inside, manages to get the ball away, but just fumbled there, I think, by Lucas Adler. The Spanish second run. No, 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 Dayo. So advantage being played by the referee it's for the knock-off. And then the, the penalty as well. Bien, après vous le neuf. On le relayeur. And Gregory Patet. Looking slightly bemused there. Such a promising attacking position. Coming to nothing for Bayon. Remarkable turn of play, though. Defending inside their own five-metre line, Bayon. The ball stripped on the floor. And away they went. Great awareness there to step inside the man, then get the ball away. Rose, stop devant, stop! Now stat. Kicking the ball long from the back, Megud. Now with the ball. Takes it into contact. And the ball stolen illegally by uh, Tanganoa. Halefu Noa. And that'll be a penalty for Bayon and a chance for them to uh, move the piles. Perhaps inside the 22. I mean, Lopez getting just inside there. And a good attacking platform coming up for the visitors. A reminder, they've lost all ten of their away games this season. Bayon. Stade Francais, meanwhile. They've only lost once at home, and of course it would be against their local rivals, Racing. Now coming back on match day seven, a tight in tactical encounter, that one. Blue, blue, As have many blue. of Stade Francais' games been this season. Well, the ball getting a roll on now, and now Stade Francais in real trouble here. They keep on rolling, all the way up to the try line, taken down just short. The uh, penalty advantage being played here. They are knocking on the door. Plowing away at the line. Cami Lopez spreads it long, and that's going to be the opening try. Yes, it is. Great finish from Sheik to begin. And Bayon have taken the lead here in just the seventh minute in Paris. Well, the pressure eventually telling it was the rolling mall that did all the damage from the line out just inside the 22. And once the uh, front part of the mall broke off and away, there was nothing really there to stop them. Just a couple of halfbacks there. Well, they're not going to stop a rampaging back of forwards, are they? They did have the penalty advantage. I think it was after Facundo Bosch was taken down just short of the line. But then the long pass from Lopez picked out to again. And Lopez now will surely pop over the extras. And he does. Well, dream start for Bayon as they look for a first a result of any sort away from home in the top catalls this season. Unlike Stade Francais, they did not have the last couple of weeks off during the break for uh, continental competition. Yeah. Drawn against Edinburgh in the last 16 of the Challenge Cup. Lost quite heavily there, 33-15. Stade Francais have had a couple of weeks just to uh, get everyone fit again, get some good blocks of training in, ready for the uh, last six games of the season. And certainly for Stade Francais, they'll be hoping a good run into the playoffs as well. 
coming into the game week 11 points clear of Racing in third. Remember the top two in the top cats go through to the semi-finals and actually get a week off and that's a nicely stolen line out as well for Bayon. Nothing's not going Stade Francais way at the moment. But a knock on on the floor. Wastes the possession for the visitors. Shake of the head from Lucas Adler. Just a fingertip in the line out. And the first scrum of the day. The pitch, of course, a hybrid concoction here. At the Stade Jean Bois. Always looks immaculate. How are the Pats going to match up here? And tidily in and quickly taken out as well. Going on the run, but Zach Henry slipping as he went into contact and then keeping hold of the ball. A penalty going Bayon's way. And ten minutes in, Stade Francais really struggling for any sort of play together at the moment. <laughs> Just slipped there and then kept hold of the ball. Marchenot was there trying to steal it. Right. Zach Henry wouldn't let him. And the referee forced right. to blow his whistle. Yep. Karim Gazal there. Also a big part of uh, Laurent Labitte's team. Here at Stade Francais, really turning their fortunes around in the last couple of seasons. Got through to the quarterfinals of the playoffs last year after finishing fourth in the table, losing almost inevitably against Racing again. In that match, the boot might be on the other foot though if they can get through to the uh, semis with uh, having a, an afternoon, a week off. Slight uh, technical adjustment there <laughs> for Pierre Batiste Nushi. Good crowd in here today, by the way. Oh, and line out stolen this time by the host, but then the ball given away and on the rampage again in behind the defensive line. Batiste Hege. Marcia knows there, but then the ball dropped by Thomas Setek. <laughs> Play being brought back. One out stolen there. May have been a knock on as well. And then the drop from Thomas Sete with a try line in sight. Good run though from Batiste Hugui. So we go back for the first knock on from the line out Flexion. by the hosts. I say, making far too many unforced errors in the uh, so. opening stanza of this match. All quickly in and out of the scrum from Marchenot. And now on the run, the miss pass, quick hands as well, and suddenly it opens up on the right hand side for Carreras. Takes it into contact five yards short. Marchenot again. This team, Tan Kassim takes the ball into the tackle. Now Tibet again, the uh, opening try scorer. Marshno again wants the pack to set that one up the ball. Well, the ball hits a foot. Not allowed to kick the ball on the ground like that and then pick it up forwards. Almost automatically offside. A little bit unlucky there for Bayon. The promising position comes to nothing. They need to take advantage of their visits into the Stade Francais 22. Remember, they're up against the meanest defence in the top 14 this season. Oh. 
Yes, it will! Flexion! Can't afford to make mistakes like that. Uh, Brad Weber, the Kiwi. So! Gets the ball in there, taken off the back by it. Here they go in. Kick clear by Zach Henry. And that's barely got outside the Stade Francais 22. The hosts still under pressure here, early doors. Not scruffy in the line out, just about tied it up. Marchino forced to take the ball into contact. Now the forwards tuck it up their jumper for a couple of recycles of possession. Just to tidy things up, get the offensive line in order. Big hit. Now the line there. Mushino this time spreads it wide. No room out there either. Oh, again, quick hands and a, almost through with the line break. The ball goes loose. Mushino gets his hands on it. Somehow finds Lopez with a no look pass. Oh, and then given away by Tibege. Unnecessary with the offload. Straight into the hands of an opponent. Surely you could see the pink shirt three metres away. Stan Francais still stuck in their own 22. Not the uh, best of kicks there, surely, from Zach Henry, though he has managed to find a little gap of space here. Camille Lopez uh, trots across, not exactly at full tilt. And goes for the up and under. The kick chase is on. Oh, and it's not been taken by either side. And eventually, the rebound goes to a pink shirt. But there has been a knock on. And that's going to be a Bayon scrum. Well, often that happens like this, doesn't it? When you have the extra time off with no games, as Stade Francais have had. Well, like, yes, they'll be fully rested but also perhaps a little bit rusty when you're used to playing every week and then suddenly you don't it can affect you i think that's what we're seeing here and bayon really perhaps need to take advantage of this while stade francais try and get back into uh, their rhythm Putting going Bayon's way. Both sides have been keen to get the ball in and out of the scrum as quickly as they can so far in this match. Flexion! Lié! Shoot! This time picked off the back by Cassim. All the way, just dipping his toe into the edge of the 22. Per shot. Takes the ball for for the forward. Just another couple of meters, getting away with a an almost drop pass there. Marshall, they're having to take the ball into contact in that point. Now Bosch makes another couple of yards. There's a. Well, there's a stab for unsafe player in the way. He's uh, trapped in there, can't get out, but... That's still going to be a penalty. Advantage being played. Oh, that's nice. This could be another try here for Bayer. And it is. 17 minutes in. 
A second try for Bayon. A second try for Cheek Tibbega. Remarkable hit at the start. John Bois. Si vraiment tu as une direction à des, des mains qui, qui montrent le contraire. It's just going to be a check to see if there's a forward pass here. That one, that's the one they'll be looking at. And a slightly different camera angle. This probably won't tell us either. Lovely piece of play from Bayon to cut through. Well, they already had the penalty advantage. Still difficult to say. The referee was level with it as the pass was played, and he's immediately called for the TMO. And I think that one's past muster. Oh, just wide from Cami Lopez. He's had been the uh, most accurate kicker off the tee in the top Catals this season. Well, that camera angle appears to suggest that it was uh, going forwards. Now, can they bring this back? OK. OK, Captain. There's going to be some disappointed travelling fans here. A disappointed Gregory Patat as well. But if he's seen the same replay we have, he couldn't, can't really complain. Tout à l'heure, après l'essai, on a, on a que un plan large et on détermine pas si elle passe en avant. Avec le plan plus serré, il y a le doute, donc on préfère vérifier, capitaine. Ouais. Décision de terrain essai. The referee quite rightly just wanting to make sure. Pretty certain when he sees the camera angle that we've just been shown that the try will not stand. There you go, clearly forwards. But it will go back to a penalty for Bayon. Okay, so. Going back for the penalty, I think this might be a, a kick to the post from Cami Lopez. He might be, uh, when he looks at his stats at the end of the season, he'll be probably quite happy that his uh, missed conversion will uh, be scr scrubbed from the record as well. Now Lopez, of course, calling for the tee. Important for Bayon to keep the scoreboard ticking over while they're in the ascendancy. Now Lopez. Striking over his 32nd successful penalty kick of the season. There's no substitute for experience, so a 10 0 lead then for Bayon at away at the league leads. Remember, Bayon haven't won away from home all season here against the league leaders. And uh, thoroughly deserving, it has to be said, of their lead at this stage of the game. Stade Francais simply haven't got going yet. Here's Leo Barre now, the uh, fresh French international, trying to do something on his own there, but the uh, ball going forwards off Barre as he tried to chase his own kick, and that will be another scrum now for Bayonne. Yes, 
it's been say pretty even Stevens at scrum time so far both teams though so using the ball pretty quickly I'm putting it straight through for the scrum half or a couple of uh, pick and goes from the number eights off the back of the scrum as well Flexion. Yeah, immediately taken off the back there by the big number eight and now there's room to run into here for Bayon if they can get their passing channels right no real layoff available there for the center picked up by Carreras now Marchino gets it back in for Sete a little bit static in midfield held up by Fakundu Bosch Nice running though here from Bayon. By and large, recycling the ball. Well, that was a big hit going in there though, just to uh, push the attacking player back those at vital couple of yards. And then straightened up by Tavito Tatafu. Again, taken into contact this time by Mori. Per shot. Megdude comes into the line. Can't find any space though. Just slowing down a little bit here for Bayon. Stade Francais have got that defensive line in exactly the shape they want. And the ball's been lost there. And the ball stolen on the ground, but coming over the top. Was Thomas Sete. A shake of the head from the big lock. The Stade Francais will have a line out just on the 40 metre line. Not allowed to play the ball on the ground in that situation. Good to see the humour still there between the coaches and the officials. Now Stade Francais now go for a first phase move off the training ground. Hasn't quite worked out for them. They've gone backwards. Defensive line coming up quickly from Bayon. This is going to be the kick then. From Zach Henry. No pink shirts anywhere near it. Very poor kick chase there. As Megdu comes inside and now has the opportunity to it. Get going there, and the ball goes out of play on the full. Lovely bit of opportunism though from Nadia Megdud. Supplying his trade with Stade Francais last season. Moving down south to Bayon. Leo Barre doing well to let him go there. Right at the end. And this time the line out. The clean one for Stade Francais. They try to tuck it up their jumper for the mall. Again, though, the mall not really going anywhere. They've tried that a couple of times without much success so far. That's well taken by Megdu. Drags a couple of pink shirts along with him. Nice flat pass from Lopez, and there's space on the outside here for Carreras. Chips the ball over the top, does the Spaniard. <laughs> and eventually, Zach Henry dots that down behind the try line.
fair to say. Bayon applying pressure in this first half. Just the one try, though. The dropout from the own, her own try area. The Stade Francais immediately back under pressure, just outside the 22. They are need to keep recycling the ball here. Not make any mistakes. Don't let Stad off the hook. Good take high up there, taking the ball into contact as well for Bayon, managing to make another couple of metres. Still knocking on the door of the 22. Oh, the Basquets. Big tackle there and did well to keep the uh, ball coming quickly. Now they get into the edge of the 22, Bayon. Still rolling forwards, Marchino gets the ball out to the back division on this near side. Not much space to work in, though. Now going back inside, Pershuk, his 12th start of the season, takes the ball into contact. Now up to the five-metre line. Megdu can't really get anywhere there. Defensive discipline needed from the men in pink. It's still a bay on ball. Wait, wait, what's trying that? to burrow their way no, over. Oh, so see it. Okay. And there's a penalty advantage, and that is that the try? Well, it looked like Lucas Adler may have just gone over. Has he been held up? No, 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 it's what I'm on. So there was a penalty advantage rolling there for Bayon. Jimmy Lopez, I think, discussing with the leadership group there whether to uh, take the penalty or go for the take the three points. It is a central, fairly central uh, position. I think they're going to go for the tap penalty here. We've seen all sorts of ways of working one of these over the years. What have Bayon got up their sleeves here? Marchino comes across, then they rumble towards the post. See it, Bayon. Stade Francais still under pressure. Just two yards out now. And it's been popped through, and that's going to be a second try of the game. Surely this time, the Cheek Tibber game. Then he scored two all season. He scored two in what? Just under half an hour here in Paris today. And Bayon now 15 points to the good. I'm sure they'll be keeping a sharp eye out for any forward pass in the build-up this time. Just a simple pop pass there, having it drawn in the defence. Quick ball out wide. And the full-back coming into the line. And he gets his hug and kiss from captain Cami Lopez as well. Well, two from two from the tee so far. Cami Lopez. He did miss one conversion, but the try was subsequently uh, scrubbed out anyway. <laughs> Easy pickings for the former French international standoff. <laughs> and it's 17-0. To Bayon here, a real upset coming on its way as Sergi Abramish Philly and Seku Makalu and indeed uh, Tanganoa Halafanua have all been taken off already, not even half an hour on the clock. Changes being run here then by uh, Lauren Labi. Well, the changes freshen things up here for the men in pink. 
Well, that's not going to help, is it? Knock on. Unnecessary there from Hiragoyen. Sekou Makalu, fair seasoned French international. Not happening for him today, though. Difficult to single out specific players really for the performance. They've just been a little bit off all over the pitch, haven't they? There's so many mistakes. Unnecessary knock ons. And it's all really Friction. come from what in the fifth minute or so where they had the the driving mall on the five meter line of the of so. just outside the Bayon Tri area. The ball turned over. Bayon nearly went up the other way, and since then they've been rampant to visitors. And here they go again. <laughs> it looked like a forward pass again. I mean the great standoffs will always be pushing the envelope. Passing the ball as flat as possible. Sometimes it's a fine line. By the way, on the benches today, a 6 2 split for Laurent Labbe and Stade Francais, a 5 3 split for Aveyron Bayonet. Just thinking, actually, a 5 3 is pretty rare. Modern rugby. The forward power seems to be, uh, if not the be all and end all, certainly mightily important. Flexion! That's a good shove on there from Bayon. And they've gone straight through the stack scrum there. Wow. Well, that's going to put a smile on the coach's face, surely. Especially away from home. If they can keep the ascendancy in the scrum here at Bayon. That's really going to help their chances of finally picking up an away win in the top catalls this season. And away to the league leaders as well, to boot. Cami Lopez. Taking no risks there with the penalty. He got the shaft going and then. Oh, thing broke apart. And that's with the fresh legs on the pitch as well. Well, not the tidiest of throws and it's gone. Stade Francais white. That's the one part of the game that hasn't quite been firing for Bayon so far. Wonder if next time they might just take a penalty scrum instead. We saw South Africa doing that to great effect during the World Cup. Good run from Carreras, making a few yards up over halfway. Set it. Slow ball, but Marshno eventually gets his hands on it. And set it. Holding on on the ground. And that's going to be a penalty all day long and a chance now for Stade Francais to maybe put the kick into the 22 and get an attacking line-out going here. Captain, Captain, I don't know if you, it's you who are the last one on the chemise. Put it well, the knees and the knees. You have the two hands on the sol. Okay, put it fort. Oh, the kick. Just inside the 22. It's from a similar position to this that Bayon set up their first try of the match. No, it's the first, it's the first. It's the first player, he comes late, but it's the first. Inscrutable on the sidelines, a short line-out call here, just five men. Now, I'll try and get them all going. It's been pushed. Over to the side of the pitch here. Now they've got to change the direction. They've done that successfully. Still rumbling forwards. Still being dragged forwards. Mikel Ivaldi. And he's over for the try. Just how effective was that? Captain, 
Finally. On the scoreboard here, Mikel. Here, Valdi for his third try of the season. He's literally dragged over by his teammates. Now, is this going to stand? Ça sera pénalité contre votre deux pour le geste qui fait à balancer le ballon sur le sur le joueur adverse volontairement dans la dans la tête. Il le sait. Ça sera pénalité au 50. Well, couldn't see anything from that angle. Rose qui balance volontairement le ballon sur la sur le visage du de son adversaire. And the ball touched down. What a great kick from out wide as well. Stad have struggled off the tee this season. Oh, well, that's what the penalty's for for throwing the ball in the opponent's face. No, but there's the gesture. Tout à l'heure, il est dans le pour le deux. A little bit unnecessary from Nivaldi. C'est pénalité, capitaine. Pénalité. Le geste, le geste pour vous, c'est pénalité pour vous. Je sanctionne le geste du 2 à Parisien. So the penalty taken. Pénalité pour nous, pénalité pour nous. So Cami Lopez no longer has to uh, drop the ball in there. He can just kick it straight into the 22 from here. Just inside. Kundo Bosch again seeing his uh, throw picked off. He then manages to get a hold of the ball on the ground, eventually ripped away by Stade Francais, and again they've turned over possession. Well, they've created more turnovers, perhaps unsurprisingly, than any other team in the top catalls this season of Stade Francais. And that's a good kick out going out to play just about on halfway. And it's been the one thing that hasn't quite worked for Bayon in this first half. They've seen a number of lineouts being picked off here. Seems to be under pressure on every throw. They just need a safe one. Maybe just go short to the front. Well, that's better. Quickly swiped off the top, taken into midfield. Big tackle on the halfway line. Facundo Bosch makes a few extra meters for the visitors. Nearly dropped, but then it's worked out really well. And Tiberga again making hay down that right hand side. Carreras as well continues the momentum of the move. And then some good jackling going on there from Lester Etienne. And the penalty goes against Bayon for holding on on the floor. Just a couple of minutes to go before half time. Stade Francais getting back into the game here. The penalty deep in their own 22 with not much angle to work with. Again, Lopez finding the run of Tibur game. Coming into the line from fullback. And then, really good jacking from Lester Etienne. He's absolutely right there. C'est bon, though. Mikel Evaldi, who did score the Stade Francais try, has been uh, patched up. It's back on now to uh, 
throw this one into the line out again safety done but i think not straight little bit skew if there from the number two captain captain melee and perhaps unsurprisingly given their travails from in the line out Bayon do appear to have the ascendancy in the strum in the scrum though so they're going to take that scrum here rather than kick the penalty or even go for the corner no, 20 seconds left on the clock here. This is probably going to be the last passage of play before half time for the Stade Jean Bois. And again, pushing that Stade Francais pack backwards at scrum time, the Bayon, and eventually taken off the back. It's all a little bit chaotic there. Good meters made through contact. Marchino drops the ball off. There's an advantage being played here. Well, there's the half time bell. The penalty advantage still for Bale. Still hammering away their way into the 22. Now, in about what, 10 metres short of the try line. Can they get a third score before half time here, the visitors? It would be a huge psychological blow if they could do it. It's all a bit scruffy there. Camille Lopez. Tries to chip the ball back, and oh, it might just have paid off here. Opportunity knocks, and he's over. Federico Mori. Well, that's not one off the training ground, surely. I think they were just making that up as he went along. Cami Lopez had the ball just outside the 22. A great play there from Bale. Just playing what was in front of them. They're going to check the video, make sure there weren't any forward passes. That looked forward. Uh, it didn't look forward, sorry. And then he's just barged through. Shoulder to shoulder. No offside from the kick. That didn't, didn't look forward, so no problem there. And then it's about the, uh, the tackle coming in here. Well, no arms used there by Brad Webber. He's gone in shoulder to shoulder. Wonderful play, though. Just heads up play there. No Bernard Gary. Keeping the ball alive, spotting Mori making the run. Okay. There's no contact to the head, but no attempt to use the arms, I think, is the uh, potential problem here for Weber. So, deliberately uh, shoulder charging there, no attempt to use the arms for a Brad Weber and the uh, former All Blacks, who did from the Chiefs in the summer, will uh, spend the first 10 minutes of the second half in the sin bin. Not what Stade Francais needed. I mean, just chipped a third try before the break. They're going to start the second half a man down as well. Now then, can Cami Lopez persuade this ball? It's not the uh, easiest of kicks for a left footer. I say he's been the most accurate penalty kicker in the top catalls this season. Well, that's a good looking kick as well. Has it got the legs? It has. Fantastic from Bayon. And it's the Basque side that are going to go into half time here at the Stade Jean Bois with a remarkable 24 points to 7 lead. A pair of tries from 
Chica Tibergain sat in the mold now, why? Si vous pouvez me permettez l'expression, vous n'êtes pas descendu du bus, une explication non, bah, comme vous dites, on n'est pas descendu du bus, je pense qu'on est même resté en vacances. Il faut qu'on se réveille là sur cette deuxième mi-temps, que ce soit dans l'engagement, même sur le jeu au pied. Ou... Là, on a pas Leo Barret, le est... yeah, new voilà, French on international. Est, on ne propose rien, il faut qu'on se réveille si on, veut, si on veut proposer un bon match. Là, le public est venu en nombre, on ne propose rien. Ils font tout ce qu'ils peuvent pour cette deuxième mi-temps. Merci beaucoup, Leo. Ils jouent leur meilleur, mais ils n'ont pas pu se faire passer. Je pense qu'il y a un bay sur le côté, nous devons donner beaucoup de crédit ici. Welcome back then to the Stade Jean Boin as uh, Bayonne enjoy a 24 to 7 lead here. Going into the start of the second half, away to uh, Top 14 leader Stade Francais. And Stade as well, down a man at the start of this second half after Brad Weber was shown a yellow card for a deliberate shoulder tackle in trying to uh, prevent Federico Mori from crossing just on the stroke of half time for Bayon's third score. Unsurprisingly, Bayon with the ball here at the start of the second half. Although a nice bit of jackling on the floor there. The turnover Kings strike again. That's not the best of passes, but it does find its mark eventually. Stade now with a chance to try and relieve the pressure on their beleaguered defence. Best defence in the top Catours. Would not have expected to ship three tries in the first half at home to a team, lest we forget who have lost all ten of their away matches so far this season. And on the knock on, unfortunately, from Nadir Megdoud. To advantage play by the referee. Stad trying to spread the ball out, getting up to the halfway line. Quick ball there, more changes made by the way, Guillaume Rue. The uh, scrum half on in place, of course. Sorry, I beg your pardon, it's uh, Jules Gimbert. On at the start of this second half, with Weber in the sin bin. wonder if he'll remain on for the second half uh, when uh, the yellow card is uh, played out. I guess he's got 10 minutes to prove himself here, Gimbert. Goes to the up and under, but there's no real kick chase on that one. Easy for take by uh, Matia Carreras. <laughs> and the foul. <laughs> Penalty rather goes. Stade Francais way. Now, are they going to go for the posts from here? Try and get back to within two scores of the visitors. Not releasing the ball on the ground there. It was Matia Carreras. I haven't seen much of the uh, the outside ball carriers from Stade Francais in this game so far. They just simply haven't had much of the ball or territory. There is Brad Weber. Now, has he been uh, told to settle down for the second half on the bench, I wonder? It was a really stupid thing to do, really, that shoulder barge. He wasn't going to stop the player crossing for the, for the try anyway. And if he had, it had been a penalty try. And any sort of contact with the head, it had been a red card as well. And now the rolling more going forwards slowly, but still making progress. There's a uh, penalty advantage as well as they continue to rumble ever closer to the try line. The ball, though, down five metres out. And then the penalty. Goes against Bayon. And against Lucas Adler. Now, Leo Barrett. What are they going to do here? They don't want to take the scrum, but a kick for the corner should do them nicely. 
have had a lot of joy at line-out time, whether it be steaming the line-out from the bay on throw-in. The last thing Stade Francais want to do, though, is give up any scrums. They've really struggled. That was the original penalty there. As Lucas Adler went in from the side. So we have Aldi with the throw in on oh, it's been taken away. What a mistake to make there from Stade Francais. They've been so secure on the line out all afternoon so far, and then suddenly with a the try line in sight. It was a poor throw. Just didn't seem to get the distance required on it. Didn't reach the intended recipient. And Marchino can kick that ball clear. Well, I say clear, he didn't even get out of the 22, actually, before crossing over. Well, golden opportunity there for Stade Francais to score a try whilst being uh, down a man. That opportunity is gone for at least for the moment. Will be a tall surprise though to see another rolling wall off the back of this line out. They try and set up again this time though. It's Bayon who get the shove on early or early on, but now they've managed to turn the corner and reverse direction of Stade Francais. Now they come forwards. The arm comes out for the penalty for collapsing. And Wall, I suspect. Now that. That's a number five again. Lucas Adler, the Spaniard. And unsurprisingly, Leo Barre again kicks that into the corner. quite on it with the throw they get away with this Stade Francais and they're just inside the five meter line here and the arms out for yet another penalty offside this time well oh. Stade Francais man being held up here they're trying to drag him over the men in pink it's just been kept short and eventually blows up for the penalty Cami Lopez wants to know why. Gabriel Ag. The uh, captain being asked to uh, go away. Oh, and it's been taken quickly, the penalty by Barry. Cami Lopez was looking in the opposite direction. You could see the action going on behind him as he was talking to his teammates. The referee, though, not happy with it being taken quickly on this occasion. Good thinking, though, from Barret. Always good to see someone thinking outside the box. Now then. They're not kicking for the corner this time. Is this going to be the tap penalty? Yes, it is. And it's not been played correctly. Sloppy again from Stade Francais. La règle, il faut que le ballon quitte clairement les mains et touche le pied. Là, en l'occurrence, avec la main, touche le pied. Donc, c'est joué incorrect. Did not touch the foot. Mais les bleus ici. Oh, what a waste! See, you see him there. He just dots the ball on the ground. Or does he just dot the ball on the foot? Zach Henry can't believe it. The crowd aren't happy either. And the worst case scenario here for Stade Francais, it's now a bay on scrum where they've been absolutely owning the pink pack all afternoon so far. Flexion. 
lié. Je. Oh, quickly. Whipped off the back of the scrum. Marchino chips the ball into space on this near side. Taken at pace there by Barry. And he play, does well to play it back out to Henry. Marchino with his hands on the ball. Couldn't quite rip it out of there. Hello, Emir, the number 17. On in this second half, lots of changes made early by Laurent Labi. Stade Francais recycling the ball, but it's been mostly quite slow. Now they sped it up a little bit, that's better. Gimbert getting the ball out of there quickly again, though. The advantage goes Stade Francais way. Too many penalties being uh, coughed up here by the visitors. And we'll go back. And we're going to have a yellow card as well. It had to happen. We've got two players here. So for Kundo Bosch, showing the yellow card. There's too many penalties. Being coughed up. The Roman Briate comes back on, as does, in fact, Brad Weber as well. So he's had his 10 minutes of rest after the shoulder tackle at the end of the first half. Well, that was Facundo Bosch just getting into an offside position. Getting in the way of the play. The line out taken short. They'll try and get the rolling more going round to the right here. Well, Stade Francais looks like they've turned. He bay on pack, but now it's gone down. Been pulled, hauled down, says the referee. Stade Francais now starting to get the ball through phases and through hands as well at pace. And that's going to be their second try of the match as well. Roman Briate, moments after coming back on, thunders over. Cuts down the deficit to 24 points to 12. They are still in control, but now down to 10. And they've just coughed up a second try. Lovely play, getting the ball through, plenty of hands at pace there, Stade Francais, and eventually just a short pass from Weber. And Briate could just rumble over. Second try of the season for the big man. So playing second row today, can play lock as well. And a good kick. From Henry. Cuts down. The deficit now to uh, 14 points to 24. Was that the start of the comeback? Of course, they did get the try near the end of the first half, only for Bayon to immediately hit back. Well, not immediately hit back, but a hit back before half time. Now, how will Bayon cope being a player down for the next, what, seven, eight minutes or so? Just suspicions they were starting to lose a bit of their discipline there in that last uh, passage of play. And another foul, another penalty. Okay, 
Kwiatkowski puts the joueur sans ballon. The players just loosen their heads a little bit here. Feels like at the moment every contact is going is uh, turning into a penalty for Stade Francais. Both sides <laughs> using their bench. I didn't I don't think there was quite the yes, separation required there between the two lines of forwards. Quickly off the top. Chance to put the ball through hands here for Stade Francais. And taken at the second attempt and a nice little uh, handoff there from Etienne. And now they're definitely streaking down the right hand side of the pitch over halfway now. Recycling the ball quickly as Weber. Ball taken at pace by uh, Hiragoyen. Felled at the uh, gain line. Again, useful yards being made through contact here. Now changing the point of attack, the chip over the top from Barre, and it's just, just a tiny bit too hard. And Joe Marchant couldn't quite take that one in. He could have been away and gone there. The England winger. When they do switch it on, Stade Francais, they definitely can play with the uh, style that has been so long associated with the club. Of course, this season, they've been a bit more, well, cynical, maybe not quite the right word, but they've certainly not been uh, entertainers. I was saying before this game, they'd rather win ugly than not win at all. And it's what they've been uh, perfectly capable of doing. I think their last game away at Montpellier, case in point, and they've managed to get pressure on the ball there and cough up another penalty against Bayon, holding the ball on the floor. Seen it quite a lot of that already in the second half, just 15 minutes in, as Henry stabs the ball over for a line-out just inside the Bayon 22. Taken. That looks awkward, doesn't it, for Briate? Eventually gets his second leg on the floor. The ball still going. Still going forwards. There is a, a blue shirt in the middle of it there. And eventually it does go their way. I think that was some great work from Konstantin Mikotadze, the uh, Georgian lock. On as a substitute here in the second half. Just managed to get in there and disrupt things. Bayon needed that. So the change is being made. Vincent Guidicelli coming on for it. He's in bin for Kindu Bosch. Now then, they've had the ascendancy. <laughs> the scrum time so far in this match. Uh, Bayon, but with only seven men in the scrum now. With uh, Pierre Huguet also making way to allow them to have <laughs> a hooker for this one. They didn't, because of course, you have to have a front row for scrums. Now one man down, are they going to be able to uh, hold their own here? Or will Stade Francais try and get the shove on? I think we saw the answer to our quest that question just there. 
Allez, on reprend. Allez, allez on passe bleu. Looks like they've sacrificed an extra player out wide for the moment. You're approaching the hour mark here, just outside Paris. Well played in the end. Some twinkle toes as well from Federico Mori. Takes the ball into contact just on the uh, edge of their own 22 here. We're going to have the, uh, the clearance kick from Marchino. And it doesn't quite go out on halfway, and Stade Francais immediately with a chance to counter here. Nice angle of kick. Oh, and it's perfectly placed as well. Well, Leo Barre in this second half coming into the line at will and being very effective too. Effectively playing, I mean, he can play as a standoff as well. It's basically, you know, the two playmakers quite similar to how uh, New Zealand have been setting up in recent years. With a spare Barrett playing at fullback. A clean line out ball this time taken by Bayon. Just uh, under 20 seconds now left on that yellow card. He'll be relieved to get to the end of that card without any further points being shipped. There's Marshall up, who does well to recover the situation there, that they're still under pressure. Bayon. That's been kicked out of play. I think Joe Marchant there wanted them <laughs> to get the ball as quickly as possible, thought it might still be possible. Marchant doing very well, though, having a had his legs wrapped up as he tried to kick that. Didn't panic, though. Great lesson for any young players watching. Again, the line out, scragged there by Bayon. They're kind of stuck inside their own 22 here, Bayon. Need to get the ball up and away. And here's Barre. Goes to the up and under, tries to collect his kick himself. It's just a little bit too long. Well taken by Cami Lopez and a nice little sidestep as well to make space. And then the kick into the opposition 22 between the two covering players. And this is also kept in play. Chance for Thibaut again to uh, try and charge forwards. He's eventually taken down on the 40 metre line. And still being kept up here is Megdude. Eventually manages to wrestle himself to the ground. Chance to recycle the ball now. Marshall up with the big men inside him. Big contact there as uh, Tatafu went into uh, the tackle. Going against. Well, I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what Jeremy Ward thinks he's doing there. Taking the attack penalty at somewhat further forward than he should have been. Well, you can feel the momentum shift in this game in the second half. Mm. 
Whereas the first half, it was uh, Bayonne very much camped in the Stade Francais half. It's been the exact opposite been true in the second half. So Luca Pere Blanc. We'll be hoping to be accurate with this line out. Again, just the five man line preferred by Stade Francais. Oh, and it's been too long. And that's been picked off there by Guy de Shelley. Oh, well, then the, the uh, kick charged down. The knock on going. Bayon's way. Is there a penalty that's reversed it? Cut. Cut for Kirotia. Okay, je le vois pas. Okay. Just waiting to uh, get the explanation. Well, kicked into the corner by Barre. Has a fantastic right boot on him, by the way. I think the problem there was uh, Setek grabbing hold of the man out uh, when he didn't have the ball. And now the driving wall is on for Stade Francais. They keep coming forwards, more and more men coming into the line. They shove the pile forward, they have the penalty advantage. They are the sixes and sevens at the back at the moment. Or has it been stolen? Well. They'll come back for the penalty. And there's going to be a yellow card. And it's the big lock, Constantine Mikardadze. Seeing yellow. There's too many penalties being coughed up here. Constantly under pressure, Bayon. It's hard to see how they can get out of their own half at the moment. I don't think it's because it was he particularly, it was just a combination of penalties building up. There had to be another yellow card eventually. Now then, going for the more. It's already a penalty advantage here. Oh, and nearly intercepted, but now there's space over on that far side. Joe Marchant cuts inside, almost reaches the five-metre line, sets it up for Weber. Feels like Stade Francais now just making metres at almost every contact, and this is going to be surely the third try for Stade Francais, and yes, it is. <laughs> Julien Del Bouy with his second try of the season. The pressure finally telling on Bayon. The Stade Francais have cut down that lead to five points with the conversion to come. Oh, seemingly no way out of their own half at the moment for Bayon. They're down a man as well. They've just shipped a third try, the second of the half, and they haven't even threatened at the other end yet. So the Zach Henry. It hasn't always been the most accurate off the tee this season. He's been very good today, though. No kicks missed by either kicker so far. And it continues as well. A roar from the crowd tells you exactly what happened there.
Zach Henry, three from three from the tee. And now Stade Francais back to within three points of Bayonne, 24, 21. The scores here. Guillaume Rouet comes back in then for Maxi Marchino. A scrum half for Bayonne trying to uh, just wrestle the momentum back here. Georgi uh, Melikidze is also on as well, the uh, Georgian prop. Confirmation that Druitt has come on for Martian up. Uh, both benches pretty much emptied now. So how are Bayon going to play this now? It's always going to be the long restart, wasn't it, when you're down to uh, 14 players? Immediately, the more rumbles up the pitch. This time taken down, but without a penalty. The ball now in hand. They do have the man advantage. That be, means more space out wide. And that kick goes long. But taken just on the edge of his own 22 by Leo Barry. That was a lovely little chip through, but very well defended as well. Well taken. By Guillaume Ruet. A Spanish international, no, no, no. born in Bayon. He's played there all his career as well. Stop the as Lopez goes with the Gary Owen. Well, that's really well taken by Zach Henry. Rose, stop. Now Weber with the, uh, the kick forwards. Lopez comes out of the 22. Lumps one. Back there for Henry, now Barre. Barre again decides to go long. Attendez, attendez. Attendez, attendez. C'est bon. Of course, with that uh, relatively new rule, and then Barre makes the mistake, didn't quite field the ball properly, and Bayon now wanting to get the, the line out taken quickly here if they can. Some pantomime booze. Oh, Barre knows he made a mistake there. It's pretty, he's been one of Stad's best players in this match. Certainly in the second half, he's been more and more influential. Just uh, under 12 minutes to go in this game. Bayon still holding on to a three-point lead, but you get the feeling they need more points if they're going to try and get anything out of this game. And remember, They've lost all 10 away games so far this season. Stade Francais, meanwhile, playing for the top spot in the division, along with Toulouse, who, who are away to Toulon, although actually the game being played in uh, Marseille at the Stade Velodrome in what could be a dress, potential dress rehearsal for the Top 14's final at the end of June. Horn space opens up here. The first time this half, really. Bayon in the stat 22. Here's Lopez now, spreads it wide to the left. Timurgain takes it into contact. Gets uh, pushed forward by the pile. Well, it's slow ball, eventually it does get out. Peter Schultz on now. The uh, burly South African front rower. Well played from Meddu, and eventually, and who's that going to go to that throw? 
It goes Stade Francais way and they decide to uh, take it as quickly as they can. And it's a good kick as well. Okay. It's been taken too quickly. On est avant ou après les 22, Stéphane? On est avant, okay. I think the uh, quick throw du temps, uh, Bruno. not taken from the correct spot. Captain, on est en dehors. Mêlé ou touche? Mêlé ou touche? Ouais, le, le temps il a arrêté. Mêlé, 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 monsieur. Mêlé. 1 et 13. More mêlé. substitutes incoming. Quentin Bethune. Mêlé, uh, mêlé. French prop. You also moved to uh, Bayonne from Stade Francais back in 2022. And uh, Seku Makalu back on the number six, having been substituted off after, what, 25 minutes, comes on in the back row in place of Roman Briate. Guillaume Martok as well also comes on in the centres for Bayonne. Into the final 10 minutes here at the Stade Jean Bois. They are 24 7 up at the half, 24 21 now. Well, they were dominant at scrum time in the first half. There, you see this there, they've got down to uh, seven in the scrum at the moment with the uh, yellow card still in play on Konstantina Mikatadze. And it's been quickly. Whipped off the back of that scrum by Hebel Hufner. Stop, you see, stop, stop, stop. Well, that ball couldn't be kicked directly out of play by Zach Henry. Mattia Carreras tries to run it out of his own 22. Goes into contact, but does manage to move everything a bit further forwards. Oh, Schultz just trying to set up the next play. Ball chipped over the top. That'll be taken in by Zach Henry. Barre now Marchant. And it's just opening up here. The Stade Francais. A still trail by three points with eight minutes left to play here. No, no, je veux. Laissez-le, parfait. Again, this time the miss pass over to the uh, left wing. The grubber goes through. And well, that's going to be a big pressure throw on the Bayon line out, just 10 metres out from their own try line. Si, <laughs> c'est now, was it touched here by the Bayonne player? No. Well, Zach Henry finally goes off to be replaced by uh, Joris Segons. Who, by the way, has uh, three drop goals to his name this season. In fact, both these teams are topping the drop goal charts with three drop goals apiece. That could be uh, something that comes into play if the scores remain this tight going into the last few minutes. Well, the kick straight out of play from Rue. Going to be the uh, full line now by the looks of it here with, uh, what, six and a half minutes left. Stade Francais still trailing by three points. Easy take for Makalu. And the driving wall is on yet again. And still, the pink pile rumbles forward. But now the ball's out, finally. With Pere Blanc. Oh, and take it. Round the corner, here's Makalu. Can't quite pick out a teammate. He did pick out Batis Hegui. Bayon number seven. 
bien derrière. Lopez. Kicks the ball long. That's a really good kick just about onto halfway. As uh, Mikhail Tadzek prepares to come back on again. 77 international caps for Georgia. The starter for the Georgians at the World Cup at the end of last year. Weber just a little bit too far forwards there to take the pass inside. Makalu, seemingly a go-to in the last few minutes here for the line-out. This time a bit more stable from Bale. They decide to uh, spread the ball wide a bit earlier this time. Barrett, well tackled in midfield, couldn't get the ball away either, was well wrapped up, the ball chipped out, Marchant picks up the ball but the penalty goes against Bayon. Not allowed to kick the ball out of the ruck. And Segons will be a little bit conservative here with the kick. Not getting it uh, inside the 22, a shrug of the shoulders and a shake of the head. Laurent Labitte. Good line out this time. The ball quickly put into hands, then straightens up in midfield. And he's going to be held up here, is he? Well, there's the big pile. And that's sure it's going to be a bay on ball. Yes, it is. They're going to get the put in the scrum. Big work there from the big boys in blue. Four minutes to go. Can they hold on, Bayon? Taking things into context in the way things work in the top cats, where it's so difficult to win away from home. This would be a huge result. It's a winless. In ten away games, Bay on this season. They have got five losing bonus points. They've come close on five occasions. Is this going to be a sixth occasion they get close, but no cigar? Or will they be able to hold on? San Francisco, meanwhile, have only lost once on home turf, and that was here against Racing earlier in the season. Back on match day seven, in fact. He also had a draw. Here against uh, Clermont Auvergne on match day 12. When they come into the game having won seven of their last eight games. And this would be a huge turn up for the books. I don't think many people would have expected Bayon to come here and compete so well. And that 24 7 scoreline at half time was thoroughly deserved. <laughs> Last away game, they lost 42 40 away to Pope. And they got absolutely hammered at home for their first home loss of the season against Toulon before the uh, break for continental competition. Well, the clock does stop, but again, a few more seconds bleed off the clock. They are a few seconds closer to what would be a remarkable victory here. A reminder that Stade Francais, three points ahead of Toulouse coming into this game week, and Toulouse away to Toulon in this evening's kickoff. And a result there for Toulouse could put them top of the pile. Can Bayon keep hold here? Ball quickly taken out of the back of the scrum, even though it did collapse in the front rows. Again, the kick bounces into the 22. 
Barre has to be careful. But now he's trying to run on the counter-attack. Goes past the first man. Goes past the second. The ball back inside. Shades of forward pass, but nothing given by the officials. The ball is in blue hands again. Two and a half minutes to play. Surely they just need to stick out of their jumper here, but the chip quickly taken. That's a poor kick as well. Unnecessary too from the Bayon scrum half. Guillaume Ruet probably getting a rocket from the coaches on the sidelines after that one. Weber gets the ball out. Looking for room down the blind side. Need to keep their discipline here, Bayon. Can't be coughing up penalties now. Now the ball spreads wide for Stade Francais. Well tackled on the 40-metre line. Not really making much headway at the moment. They can't really afford to kick the ball away either, Stade Francais. They need really to keep the ball in hand. And a horrible catch, 22. Need to kick and get the ball down the pitch. They can't afford to give possession away. And of course, when the defensive line knows you can't kick, they can step up a little bit higher and be a little bit more aggressive with their line speed as well. A nice take by uh, Jeremy Ward at the second attempt there. Again, still on the 40-metre line. That's going to and fro at the moment. Stade Francais, just a minute now left to play. Still three points back. At last, a, a semi-line break, a few metres made. But there's space now over on the right-hand side. The ball nearly given away, no knock on either. Here's Joe Marchant, forced to play the ball into contact. 40 seconds left now. Still. Stade Francais hammering away at that defensive line. The ball's been lost here now, surely. Just tuck it up your jumper if you're a man in blue. Whatever you do, don't kick it. Just need, what, two or three recycles of possession here. They'll be as slow as they can about it as well. 15 seconds left. Another one here, not really trying to do anything special with the ball. Stade Francais. I think they've got the ball back here. Oh, remarkable with five seconds left. What a great piece of running here from Leo Barret. And it's still Barret. Still Barret. They still can't take him down. They eventually take him down in the last five metres. Weber gets the ball out again. Stad Francais. Just a metre away now from what will be a remarkable victory and turnaround if they could pull this off. Bayon just needed one more ruck. And they coughed the ball up, and now they're under pressure on their own try line. And there's men over here, and this is going to be the winner. And Giovanni Hebel Kufner nonchalantly trots over the line. And somehow Stade Francais have pulled de, de, uh, a win from the jaws of defeat. Absolutely remarkable. And that man, Laurent Abbey, must be utterly dejected. His team have thrown it away right at the last. Now, is there going to be a check of the TMO? There's a bit of a contretemps going on there between the two sets of players. Tempers will be running high. Bayon. Well, if they can't win this game, they're not going to win this away this season, are they? A wry shake of the head. Well, Camille Lopez not happy with the way the ball was stripped away. He didn't quite see how that happened. The referee is checking 
with the TMO to see if there was anything wrong with the uh, jackling of the ball with five seconds left. Remarkable scenes here at the Stade Jean Bois. Joris Segons waits to take the kick. It all started with a wonderful run from Leo Barre, who'd been superb in the second half for the capital side. And how's that for a finish? From almost over on the touchline, slotted between the posts there by Segons to complete a 28 to 24 win here for Stade France. They left it late, they got the ball back with just five seconds remaining. And Bayon somehow, from having the ball in hand with five seconds left, have found a way to lose yet again on their travels.